um, the topic here is uh, options that we have, uh, especially in this country, uh, after graduation in medical school, that is after MBBS. Uh, so let us start and uh, uh, I'll keep it uh, uh, more of a casual discussion. If there's any uh, question or any query, anytime, please uh, feel free to stop me. We'll, we'll discuss that. Um, I have I've, I've tried to uh, explore many areas and I have not gone into very much details of everything, but you know, try to brush up with a lot of options that we have after MBBS. Uh, if any one of you are interested in knowing more about uh, uh, something, please let me know. I, I, I'll go through it and you know, we'll try to reach you with uh, the solution. So first of all, uh, let me congratulate you all for uh, completing one of the toughest uh, you know, degree in this country. MBBS is not an easy task and uh, uh, it's, it's time to enjoy. But now the party is over. We are done with MBBS and many questions, you know, arise uh, in our mind. Well, what is the next option? What should we do? What is best for us? Um, especially in India where, uh, you know, we, we are facing with a lot of problems in, in, in uh, medical field, especially with a lot of litigations coming up and many issues uh, about uh, doctor patient relationship. Uh, the, the faith is, you know, in, in general public is not that strong about doctors uh, uh, practicing in India, especially in private sector. So what is the meaning of this image here? It's this. So like uh, for most of us, our parents decided that we should do MBBS, especially, you know, uh, 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 if your parents are into medical field, uh, they'll just, you know, coerce you to do MBBS only. Uh, because, uh, you know, somehow that's the uh, best option they think it is for us. So anyways, now we have entered this field and uh, what to do after MBBS is also usually decided by parents. Uh, that's what happened in my case. You know, my father wanted me to become a cardiologist. So he asked me to do MD and then DM cardiology. I did all that. But luckily, if your parents, you know, give you the option, then maybe this is something that can help you. I, I found it on internet. It is not my flow chart, but it's sort of, you know, very, uh, easy as easy as it can be you know to this it, it can help you to decide what uh, speciality you should choose but everything that is given in this diagram are conventional things that we do you know when you do dm um, you uh, uh, give any of these exams like need pg or they are deemed universities like aims jikmar pgmr which conduct their own exams entrance exams and you give any of these exams and can enter one of these so sorry. You can enter one of these fields like MD, MS, Diploma or DNB. In MD, there are various options. You can go for internal medicine, chest medicine. Uh, you know, it's it's medical field. So uh, dermatology, in surgical, you have orthopedic, general surgery, uh, ops gynae, and uh, DNB also has all these specialities which can, you can follow. But are these enough? Are these good enough for uh, 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 MBBS nowadays in this country? Uh, and, you know, because the kind of problems you're facing in practice and the scenario is changing. So do we have any better alternative? Uh, more than better, I would say anything else which is more interesting to do. So let us just think out of the box and uh, start exploring something that is not very conventional but at the same time more interesting and you know uh, attracting so if you think of anything other than doing md ms in this country uh, the first thing that comes to our mind is pursuing our super uh, our uh, you know higher studies in foreign countries and two countries which come to our mind which are very you know very well charted which we know a lot about which are very comfortable for indian students are us and uk so in this discussion, we'll talk about these two countries uh, and, uh, uh, you know, many other countries have, you know, a, a similar kind of examination. So uh, if you understand UK ex exam pattern, 
plus or minus same kind of system is there in Australia and New Zealand. If you, uh, you know, get to know a uh, uh, system in the United States, it is uh, sort of same in uh, Canada as well. So let us start with UK. There are two exams that you can give, uh, you know, to start practicing in uh, United Kingdom or getting admission in higher, uh, uh, getting admission for higher studies. So these two exams are PLAB and Royal College examinations. Let us talk about PLAB. It is Professional and Linguistic Assessment Board Test. It has got two parts, part one and part two. It is conducted by GMC, that is General Medical Council. So before, so the prerequisite uh, to sit for PLAB is a, a graduation degree, which is MBBS in India. And you should have completed your internship. Along with that, you should pass a English test, which is either OAT or IELTS. Uh, in IELTS, you should get a, a band score of at least 7.5 for, for, for getting admission in uh, those, uh, um, you know, uh, good institutes. They require IELTS of at least 7.5. So after you have cleared MBBS, completed your internship, given IELTS got score of 7.5, band score of 7.5, and you have created an account on GMC online, that is the website. The, which you know on, on through which they conduct PLAB examination. So after you've completed these three things, you can sit for PLAB. PLAB is as we discussed two parts: part one and part two. Part one is a written exam, uh, which has got 180 MCQs, and uh, all these MCQs to be answered in three hours. They all start with a short scenario, you know, clinical question, and and followed by five possible answers. You have to choose one best answer. PLAB can be given in many countries, including India. Uh, PLAB 1. For PLAB 2, it is sort of a practical examination. It is objective structured clinical examination, which is made up of 18 scenarios, uh, uh, each lasting eight minutes. And it aims to reflect real life settings, including a mock consultation or an acute ward. So in, in, in PLAB 2, they will uh, you know, they'll ask you to, you know, uh, take history of the patient, talk to the patients. Here they assess your clinical, you know, skills. This part is conducted only in Manchester in United Kingdom. So for PLAB 2, you have to go to UK. That was about PLAB. We'll, we'll come back to PLAB uh, uh, after a few slides on Royal College examination. So there are various uh, Royal College examinations that you can give. Uh, I'll talk about MRCP, that is medical uh, uh, side of Royal College examinations. There are various uh, you know, Royal College examinations for uh, different uh, fields, like uh, for Ops Gynec, there is uh, uh, MRCOG. For uh, uh, surgery also, there is MRCS. We'll talk about MRCP, everything is more or less uh, same. Uh, just the difference is between number of examinations. If you have two steps, if you have three steps. We'll talk about MRCP in detail. So MRCP is conducted by Royal College of Edinburgh, Glasgow and London. These three universities, you know, uh, conduct this MRCP examination. Few statistics given on this uh, website is this. So they have uh, more than 25,000 candidates appearing for this examination every year. It is conducted in more than 40 countries and uh, they have different examinations, 15 plus examinations that they conduct. This is the structure of medical education post graduation in United Kingdom. So uh, uh, after you have completed graduation, which is sort of MBBS in, in India. So if you, uh, you have come, given MBBS in India or the equivalent examination in United Kingdom, you can enter first circle, that is foundation training, which is of two years. Now, after completing PLAB, you can enter in foundation year in United Kingdom. Uh, but after you have completed MRCP in India, you can enter the second circle, which is internal medicine stage one, which is of three years. So in this circle, which is of three years, ST1, ST2, ST3, you can enter at HT3 level if you have completed MRCP from India. If you have completed PLAB in India, then you can enter foundation year two. So that is the difference between PLAB and MRCP. MRCP is slightly difficult. You see, it, it requires more in-depth knowledge of medicine, but prerequisite for both is MBBS completion 
and one year of internship after that. So after you have completed uh, three years of uh, internal medicine training, you enter speciality training, which starts from ST4, 5, 6, and ST7. After that, you give examination, uh, which is a CCT, and a post CCT, you uh, can apply for consultant's job in UK. So after PLAB, you enter foundation year two, and after MRCP, you enter anywhere in uh, the second level, which usually you can you know enter ST3 stage. So you save uh, two to three years of training if you have completed MRCP from India before you apply for a job in UK or you know higher uh, studies in UK. Now let us talk about exam structure of MRCP. It is of two parts but three steps: part one, part two written, and part two paces. Part one is two paper format, which is three hour duration, hundred MCQs in each paper. And you have five options. Best of five is what you have to mark. There is no negative marking, so you feel free, you know, to guess the answer if you actually don't know. Syllabus for this is medicine, but more of uh, you know basic medicine, uh, especially basic sciences like anatomy, physiology, biochemistry. Applied knowledge of these basic sciences into medicine. It is not uh, a pure anatomy that they'll ask you. You know, there, there'll be questions which are related to anatomy, but have some application in medicine. Uh, so uh, it, it, it's just one of the examples. So that kind of questions they ask you in part one. Part two is similar. Here also you have two papers, 100 MCQs in each paper, best of five answers. You have to mark one answer of the five options that I provided to you. Here the exams, uh, the syllabus is more of uh, you know, concentrated to internal medicine. So you have a lot of clinical questions. You also have clinical questions from, um, you know, uh, um, uh, allied subjects like uh, obs gynec, uh, dermatology, pediatrics, geriatrics, um, infectious diseases are given a lot of importance. Uh, you know, statistics they ask you. And here they, uh, they usually have five, five to six questions where imaging is involved you know either they'll give you x-ray ct scan or mri and it'll ask you to you know comment on that paces is is part two practical for mrcp and this is the stage where this examination gets tricky you know this is the most difficult part of the examination of mrcp uh, basically because you have a lot of or interaction with patients and examiners. There are real life patients or you know dummy actors with whom you have to interact. And given the limited time that you have, and they keep you absolutely blinded. I mean, they do not give you any clue about the patient. So it, it becomes slightly difficult. But with kind of practice and kind of exposure that we get in this country in India about clinical cases, uh, if you if you um, start training for uh, MRCP. Uh, as you enter your you know, post graduation, it becomes it becomes very easy for you to crack this exam. So uh, till now, this was the structure of paces, which we will discuss uh, in late 2020. I mean, uh, in, in the, at the end of this year, they are going to change this scenario. Uh, this this you know structure. There will be slightly different structure for paces examination, but you know. Uh, the skills that they are going to check you for will remain the same. So the, the art or the knowledge that is required to pass the examination will remain the same, except for, you know, the, uh, the time duration of one station or, you know, the structure of a station can change slightly, which they are going to, which is given in detail uh, in their website. But it is not yet implemented, so I've not discussed about that. In late 2020, or maybe, uh, you know, the country is facing this corona pandemic maybe they'll they'll push it a little later this change so as of now there are five stations in paces and you have total eight encounters so you'll have eight patients so let's talk about station one where you will have two patients one patient will be a case of respiratory system the other patient will be abdominal system so respiratory system when you if i'll just give you an example when you enter the station you'll have 10 minutes of which you, you will get six minutes to examine the patient and four minutes is for examiners to take your interview or viva. So in, in, in this six minutes, they'll give you a, a patient who usually
usually be a clinical life uh, you know scenario a patient who will have all those signs and symptoms you don't have to talk much to patients i mean you don't have to take his history as such but you have to examine him and during examination you know you just have to ask him to sit sit down you know take deep breaths give give you a cough something like that raise his hands all that you can ask him but you cannot dig into the history of the patient so for example they they just have a, a a cardboard in which they'll write a scenario that this patient is suffering from breathlessness uh, of you know for last 8 years kindly examine the patient so that will be your respiratory patient you'll start with general examination then go back to systemic examination uh, you'll examine his respiratory system and relevant general examination like if he if he's got pallor if he's got clubbing if he's got ictus cyanosis Uh, is there raised JVP signs of right heart failure? In general examination, all that thing you look for, which are relevant to respiratory system. Uh, you look for his JVP, which will be an indicator of right heart failure in this patient. So in that six minute, you have to do general examination and systemic examination of the patient and come to a conclusion. You have to give differential diagnosis. Uh, so you will say uh, um, this patient is a case of COPD. Uh, maybe uh, or you will say this patient is case of interstitial lung disease and if the patient has got signs in, you know uh, general features of scleroderma you will say this patient is a case of so uh, we were on station 1 so that is how they will give you respiratory uh, so if on general examination you have signs and symptoms of scleroderma signs of scleroderma then you will say patient is case of interstitial lung disease with scleroderma that is how it goes the, for 4 minutes they'll ask you questions uh, about uh, uh, whatever your case is maybe interstitial lung disease they'll ask you about those or scleroderma how to investigate how to examine uh, you know how to treat all those questions similarly you'll have uh, one abdominal case also now station 2 is history taking which where you have 20 minutes of which you'll get 14 minutes to talk to patients one minute to recollect your thoughts and for 5 minutes they'll take your viva examiners will take your viva so every every station you have two examiners basically Uh, so in 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 history taking, uh, for example, you will have a, a scenario where it will say this is thirty year old female who has come with thirty uh, year old female uh, who has come with headache of uh, seven months duration. Um, uh, a general practitioner uh, had ha had examined her for for the same and did few investigations, of which ESR is thirty. Uh, now he has referred uh, uh, for your expert opinion. That kind of scenario you'll have. so you'll talk to the patient for 14 minutes you'll try to dig into the history and see what is is you know reason for uh, uh, headache so most of the time they are migraines or you know uh, benign intracranial hypertension so, uh, so you know you'll take history and come to a conclusion here also you'll give your differentials and for 5 minutes they'll take your uh, viva so what uh, they'll ask you about uh, your differentials how will you investigate and what are red flag signs uh, in history taking one very important thing which is different which is not different which is probably neglected in our country is patient's concern so if you're taking history of the patient in india we really don't think much about what patient's idea about her diagnosis is maybe she had googled it and she has she has uh, this this fear in her mind that probably she is suffering from malignancy she has some intracranial tumor and if you don't ask patient even if the history is very clear cut benign uh, cause of hyper uh, headache like you have come to a conclusion which is, uh, which is uh, you know migraine for you and you are very very sure about the diagnosis but still if you have not explored patient's concern and if you have not talked to her about her fear which is intracranial malignancy then uh, you will show the station so it is very important in in these exams that we address patient's concern in every station where we are allowed to talk to the patient it is very imperative very necessary for us to talk to the patient about her concern or patient's concern so that is history taking then you come to station 3 which is similar to station 1 except for the systems here you will have one patient of cardiovascular system and one patient of neurology next is station 4 station 4 is communication skill and ethics it is similar to station 2 so you'll have 14 minutes to talk to patient one minute to recollect your thoughts and five minutes is is the time where uh, examiners will uh, take your uh, viva or you know ask you questions in communication ethics and skill you will have a, a you know a, a, a scenario which is related to uh, communication uh, uh, you know uh, the uh, problems that 
doctor and patients face in day to day life like uh, uh, for example you will be asked to talk to a patient who has come with symptoms suggestive of subarachnoid hemorrhage and he is not willing to do lumbar puncture so you have to talk to him and explore his ideas about lumbar puncture and counsel him you know take his consent for lumbar puncture or you can get a relative of a patient who is admitted with you with intracranial bleed and this patient was started was started on warfarin by some other doctor now because of warfarin you know he has come with intracranial bleed so the relatives are blaming the doctor who had started warfarin now you have to talk to the patient's relative and you know tell him that uh, warfarin was required at that time and it is it is very unfortunate that your patient has developed intracranial bleed and you know those kind of stuffs uh, or you can you can uh, uh, you will be asked to talk to a relative of a patient who is on ventilator and terminally ill now uh, there is no option but to disconnect ventilator because it is uh, you know um, the recovery chances of recovery are almost nil so that kind of scenarios you'll get for for 40 minutes you'll talk to either patient or the relative in station 4 usually you have uh, you know actors who will who will be given their part they'll ask you questions sometimes you can have a angry patient or a relative like the patient which i had uh, this patient um, uh, actually she was a relative of a patient who was admitted and had developed some side effect of the drug uh, uh, the dose of which was wrongly administered by uh, the staff so that kind of scenario you can get you have to talk about Uh, uh, you know various aspects in in these kind of stations you know ethical aspect and uh, you'll have to you know uh, educate patients relative about uh, uh, her rights that she can you know go uh, talk to grievance committee she can file a complaint against doctor uh, you know how to go about that scenario is what you have to talk to or whoever is there in front of you now station 5 is is the most difficult of these stations in which you have to encounters of 10 minutes each here you'll have a patient of multi system disorder usually uh, there may be a case of connective tissue disorder or you know maybe a rheumatoid arthritis or a patient of uh, um, hypo or hyperthyroidism where you have many other systems involved you know for a, for example if you have uh, hypothyroidism then you'll have to check for reflexes which are you know delayed relaxation Uh, of reflexes you have to check for eyes if there is any issue in the eyes uh, or you have to check check for uh, you know abdominal system if if there is any problem with constipation uh, as as there in uh, uh, hypothyroidism or you have to check for carpal tunnel syndrome so you'll have to examine her uh, you know uh, bo- both her hands also so these are the scenarios which are multi system and here you have to do very focused examination uh, take patient's history Uh, and address patient's concerns and come to a conclusion explain that conclusion to the patient and you know talk to the patient about any any query or concern that patient has got so there are a lot of things that you have to do in this station so 10 minutes are you know very little for it so you have here here also you have 6 to 7 minutes 6 minutes to um, take history examine patient give patient diagnosis and talk to patients so so many things you have to do so this becomes slightly tricky but if you if you have if you practiced it many a times you know what exactly you are expected to do in this station it becomes easy so if if you get a case patient of hypothyroidism basically they give you the diagnosis he is a patient of hypothyroidism or the diagnosis will be very evident as soon as you enter the uh, room you you see the patient you will get a prognosis so you will know uh, oh she is the or he is the patient of graves disease so there is this is graves of thermopathy so i'm i'm actually you know uh, talking to a hyperthyroidism patients of graves disease so somewhere in uh, past he had hypothyroid hyperthyroidism or maybe you know uh, he has been treated with that and now he has come with in the of of the issue so you have to talk about that you know what targeted things you have to do and like that so uh, that is station 5 so these are the five stations that you have in basis examination so uh, Uh, this is the university that i'm i'm you know attached to texila american university this is the university which helps students in preparing for royal college examination so uh, they have their programs which are conducted in universities which are affiliated to teaching hospitals uh, um, when you are attached to these universities uh, you are attached to this university by the time you are pursuing your post graduation they help you 
uh, uh, in uh, training for a Royal College examination. So they provide you with all the uh, study materials and you know they give you a lot of practices. Uh, they have international faculties and resources. They provide you with uh, you know or subscriptions of uh, uh, many study materials which are available online. And also they conduct a lot of mock tests too. So you get a lot of practice uh, for, for uh, preparation uh, in this Royal College. So they have many speciality many specialities which you know they conduct their courses in and these are uh, MRCP, MRCS, they have uh, courses for obsgynic radiology, pediatric and child health and also emergency medicine. So why should we go for you know um, education or jobs in, in, in you know foreign countries especially in UK because uh, the most important reason is the degree that you get in these countries or the clinical experience that you get while working in these countries. These are very prestigious degrees. They are valid uh, in, in most part of the world. Like if you have a degree from UK, it is valid in, in, in Gulf countries. It is valid in Singapore. And, and the you know uh, package that you get after you have attained these degrees or you have some clinical experience from these countries is slightly better, is, you know, markedly better than if you, if you don't have these experiences. Also, if you prefer to work in the same country, uh, they have very good work-life balance and uh, you have a lot of uh, respect in society. Also, you get paid well. Now let us talk about USMLE. So USMLE is basically a licensing examination for US. And uh, if you are interested in USMLE, you should start preparing for uh, from your MBBS days only because uh, you know, the syllabus is what you uh, study in your uh, MBBS curriculum. So it has got uh, four steps. First three steps are uh, the one that we are concerned with. Step one, step two, CK, that is clinical knowledge and step two, CS, that is clinical skill. It, step one is, is MCQ based examination. There they ask you basic sciences. Uh, uh, for Indian students, it is what we study in uh, you know, first year and second year of MBBS. Step two CK is, uh, is, is medical, uh, you know, uh, the MCQ based examination, which the syllabus is what we do in uh, uh, third uh, minor and major uh, um, uh, of our MBBS. So it has got uh, medicine and allied subjects like uh, pediatrics, obstetrics, uh, geriatrics and all. These two steps, step one and step two CK can be given in our country, but for step two CS, that is clinical skill we have to go to USA. Step three basically is is matching after you have given all three examinations uh, you uh, with these course you apply to uh, various institutes and various degrees in US and, and depending on your scores your clinical uh, you know experience they give you the you know you they match you for a particular field or branch that is called step three. So um, when you're applying for a step one, step two CK or step two CS, check with World Director of Medical Schools. Uh, your medical college should be enlisted in that uh, you know, website. Then only you're eligible to apply for these examinations. Um, usually all medical colleges in India are enlisted in that website. Few MCI non-recognized colleges in India and I think Ukraine is the country which is you know, not allowed to give uh, USMD. Otherwise, uh, uh, Indians don't face a lot of uh, any problem in giving USMD. So for USMLE, uh, the difference between USMLE and PLAB MRCP is that in USMLE, the score that you get is very important. You have value to these scores. So it is very important that you you know get higher scores in these examination why because scores have importance in your matching that is step three also once you have passed any of these steps you cannot reappear for the examination so if you've got a passing marks even if it is not good you cannot reappear and recorrect your marks so it is very important that we you know uh, aim for better marks in, in USML examination. Where is in PLAB, where uh, uh, in PLAB and MRCP marks are, are not counted. 
once you've passed this examination, you just get pass. Uh, whatever score or marks you've got is, is irrelevant. So that is one thing that we have to you know, take into account when you're appearing for USMLE. And in one year, for any particular step of USMLE, you cannot give it for more than three times. So in a 12 month period, you can appear for any step for three times only, not more than that. And one particular step you can give for six times, not more than that. So these are the things that you have to you know, take into consideration before once you start preparing for this examination. And the benefits of working in US is, is known to all of us. Like in UK, the degree is very prestigious. The clinical experience that we get in these countries is, is uh, you know, very, very prestigious and it, it has a lot of value, especially in corporate hospitals in India, if you come back to work here. And if you decide to work in US, you have very good life and you get paid very well. Now, other than pursuing courses overseas, like going to uh, foreign countries for higher studies or jobs, there are various other things in this country that you can do if you're interested in. Post MBBS, if you're not, in, you know, you do not want to go for conventional courses like MDMS, there are many fellowships uh, which are conducted by various institutes. They are there are many government run and private hospitals also which conduct these fellowships uh, in various fields like in emergency medicine, child care, obstetrics, diabetes, anesthesia, other fields where uh, you can do these fellowships. Maharashtra University of Health Sciences in Nashi, they have various uh, uh, diplomas and fellowship courses, post MBBS, which you can enroll for. This is one university which gives you fellowship in uh, emergency medicine post MBBS. You can check their website and get the idea about uh, the examinations. Indian Society of Critical Care Medicine is gives you a two year fellowship program in critical care. The eligibility is MBBS. Uh, but this degree is not recognized by MCI. So you have to take that into account. Medical Council of India also uh, have, ha has got many fellowship programs uh, post MBBS. Uh, you can enroll for any of these programs and you can you know, pursue your study in those fields. If you do not want to go for uh, medical education, you know, you, you got bored of MBBS and you no longer want to treat patients or interact with patients, then there are many other things that you can do. MBBS, of course, is a eligibility criteria for uh, if you know, you know uh, those uh, uh, commission services that you can uh, give. So you can appear for IES or IPS examination. They have a uh, lot of prestige in this country. You can appear for those exams if you're interested in uh, you know, uh, working for government and, uh, and interested in those kind of jobs. Also, if you're interested in doing research in applied sciences like uh, genetics, tissue engineering, uh, you know, drug discoveries and machine learning into medicine. Uh, so you can uh, check this course. Um, it is a school which is affiliated by IIT Kharagpur and they have three year postgraduate course, especially for MBBS graduates in these fields. As you can give UPSC exams for IAS, IPS, you can also appear for combined medical services conducted by UPSC only. And after you have given these exams, you get job in government sector. So you can get a job of medical officer in either railways or various hospitals in, uh, in, in New Delhi. It's a national examination, which is conducted once a year and upper age limit is 32 years. Uh, you can uh, get the idea of, of you know, details of this examination on the website www.upsc.gov.in. Also, if you are interested in serving countries, you know, if you are, if you are, uh, you know, if you are uh, interested in going to uh, armed services, then they also conduct examination, entrance examination. Uh, in Mumbai, it is conducted in INHS Ashwini. So with this examination, you, you can, you know, serve uh, uh, various armed forces in this country.
also if you are interested in research and academics many pharmaceutical companies and uh, various institutes in india like aims icmr or tata institute of fundamental research they have various uh, courses in which they train you for uh, research in medical fields and if you are uh, interested in uh, doing management kind of stuff then you can join any of these uh, management schools aims also has management course for hospital uh, for hospital management but the admission criteria strictly is mbbs whereas in rest of the institutes uh, non mbbs students also can enroll for hospital management last but not the least i think self employment is not a, a a bad option we all know of mbbs doctors who earn a lot of money and they enjoy a lot of respect and prestige in society so that is always a very much viable option especially if you are planning to settle in you know you know non metropolitan cities of this country uh, that's all i think uh, i have tried to you know touch on many fields but if there is any doubt or any problem or you want to know in detail about uh, any of these fields please let me know thank you thank you so much doctor uh, if anyone has any query you can unmute yourself and you can ask or you can also post it in the chat uh, doctor I, uh, dr ramanan has a query regarding masters of public health i think he would like to know what will be the uh, masters, masters in masters public, public health yeah uh, which country are we are, i mean i really masters of public health no i really don't know about this course uh, raman and i'm sorry uh, masters in public health in india if you want to pursue courses in public health then uh, you can apply for uh, you know post graduation in a subject called psm preventive and social medicine uh, that is how you do uh, public health in in in, in india but in usa they have masters in public health which i think you have to uh, get admission through usml only if there is anything else you are talking about i really don't have much idea about it i'm sorry acha someone has said in uh, acha you only so national institute of epidemiology okay i i didn't know that thank you for 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 a conventional uh, you know Uh, colleges like medical colleges in you can pursue a post graduation in psm uh, they have md in, in psm subject where you they teach you uh, you know public health yeah in U united states you have okay teaching online i don't know critical care course from many hospitals have critical care courses so you can apply to any of these courses uh mhs also has critical care courses but they are usually usually post you know uh, post md uh, uh uh in sain hospital in ltmmc which is there in mumbai uh, it's one of the hospital uh, bmc run hospitals there also you have a course in in critical care it, but it is post uh, uh, uh md it is not post mbbs see corona pandemic is not going to last for very long i mean honestly speaking maybe for it's it's a virus so uh, after it has affected you know a, a, a chunk of population uh, uh, it's uh, it is going to come down like what other countries have experienced spain uh, you know uh, and uh, especially uh, in in usa now new york new york uh, cases are coming down and now they are not having severe cases so what, corona pandemic will not will not last forever maybe 2 3 4 months maximum and definitely uh, uh, see what has happened because of corona pandemic many of the courses are you know not you know uh, conducting in full fledged capacity uh, especially in uh, hospitals which are catering to corona patients so that can get affected for initial few months not after that i think uh, niharika what do you mean by ml a uh, future of ml for mbbs graduates since most do not have any experience in that field i i did not get you what ml is machine learning okay machine learning <laughs> difficult i mean uh, i don't know these these uh, you know 
branches are not very well developed in in, in our country if you are if you are trying to pursue these uh-huh. courses in us or uk maybe they have a lot of scope but in india it is sort of limited artificial intelligence in pv hello hello pharma industry yeah yeah, yeah. so all these applied sciences they have lot of scope especially in the research sectors they do have lot of uh, importance and and they're always uh, a good career option yes yes of course of course mbbs graduates have uh, you know lot of scope in these fields yeah yeah sure hello yeah hi uh, hello everyone um, hello sir this uh, dr ramanan hi hi ramanan hello yeah 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 go ahead go ahead hello yes please please go ahead uh, sir uh, i am an uh, mmst graduate i completed my mmst uh, this year right right uh, so uh, the machine learning and artificial intelligence uh, though for the doctors is not very easy okay so uh, it took 3 uh, uh, i i was studying in iit karakpur for past 3 years right 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 uh, they started uh, uh, our course by teaching the basic mathematics like uh, revision of wealth mathematics uh, yeah. and then we moved uh, to choose between two fields one is dry uh, labs and then wet labs dry labs is biotechnology and cell cultures and cancer biology those kind of things right next is uh, um oh, sorry uh, wet lab is uh, cancer biology those kind of things and dry labs is like a system uh, machine learning and artificial intelligence but before uh, stepping into machine learning and artificial intelligence uh, they want us to uh, know the engineering mathematics first of all so you took uh, are nearly around one and a half years for us uh, to refresh our knowledge with uh, statistics and other kind of things and even with right, those, right. Uh, those kind of knowledge we can't cope up with the engineers who do uh, who are all trained uh, for uh, especially for machine learning and artificial intelligence okay, okay. the only yeah. thing uh, the only input which uh, we can give is like how to use the uh, engineering course like how to use the engineering absolutely in, in medical field ah uh, in medicine field for in example field. Uh, for right. example uh, if an uh, if an a group of engineers are working towards uh, uh, diagnosing an uh, patch on the x ray lung x ray right 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 so they can't know what is the patch yeah absolutely so that input they require from from a medical yeah. uh, so what we know we, we know from basics of machine learning we can say them uh, you should uh, the computer should see the white line a right. white border uh, maybe uh, the uh, like we have to uh, say them uh, the this is a bronchus this is trachea they right. should not identify and the, uh, the patch the pattern of the patch should be like this this is what we can uh, give input to engineers we can't do directly that machine learning and artificial intelligence which requires a lot of uh, input with money and also time i mean a lot of in- knowledge about engineering right yeah engineering it's, yeah, it's yeah. like lot of okay, computer okay, coding okay. it uh, it needs it requires a lot of uh, like investment in our time which we don't have yeah yeah absolutely and we have a uh, uh, lot of other better options to do isn't it yeah <laughs> we just uh, we can learn like very basics and we can ask uh, we can direct them and not uh, fully like this is what i learned from my past 3 years experience like we can't fully uh, pursue that uh, career as our scope yeah but they they'll definitely always require a, a medical you know graduate because yes, ultimately sir. they will not know where to go yes sir. with that knowledge of engineering unless they are guided by you know a a, a medical graduate yes, isn't sir. it uh, yes sir frankly speaking uh, uh, the people uh, in uh, non medical fields think that uh, guys who did uh, md ms and mch they know better but they don't have time to allocate for them to sit and uh, speak with engineers what they want they have they are uh, like they are they want their patients will be waiting for them they have to see this they have to i know, I know. right right Okay. so th- this is this is i think uh, everywhere you know uh, th- this is how medical field evolves uh, you know i i'll give example of cardiology so when they started with angioplasty they did not have anything so doctors only gave the idea to engineers that we want these thin wires yes, they should have this torqueability they should have this you know inflammability 
uh, and uh, this pressure the balloon should you know uh, inflate at rupture at like that so unless they are guided by medical graduates it is difficult for them because they don't know what we require yes sir i know i know thank you thank you so much Ram. thank you sir. it was very informative thank you fine i think uh, that's for now dr dhirendra yeah, yeah. thank you thank, thank you, you so all much. for attending this session thank, thank you, you so much uh, yeah. dr dhirendra that was a uh, nice uh, having your experience shared with everyone thank, so, you. thank, thank you, you all for, for joining and if you have any further queries you, you can get in touch with your uh, advisors thank you thank you bye Thank you.